Hey guys, happy Monday. I hope everybody is doing well out there today. Uh, today we're going to kind of take a deviation. Uh, you know, normally uh, during the week we do a lot of Docker videos and that sort of thing. Uh, today we're gonna kind of deviate from that just a little bit and we're gonna take our first look at a Turing Pi. Now, one of the things that I've wanted to do uh, basically for the last year was have my own Raspberry Pi cluster. And that's where you've got several Raspberry Pis all kind of working together as one compute unit uh, to uh, take all of their resources and make one stronger computer, if you will. One of the issues that I've had with wanting to set up a, a Raspberry Pi cluster is just the sheer amount of hardware and cables and all that kind of stuff that you need in order to do that. Now I have a Pi rack that's got four Pis in it. It's got two Pi 4s and two Pi 3s or 3B pluses, I guess. And uh, in order to make them all work together, you're gonna need power cables for each one. So that's four power cables. You're gonna need uh, four network cables. You're going to need a dedicated switch. Uh, most likely it's easier if you've got an, a dedicated switch. Uh, plus you're gonna have to have the rack and the whole bit. It's just a lot of hardware to make a, a Raspberry Pi cluster. Now that's just a lot of hardware and, and, and cables and whatnot for a traditional Raspberry Pi cluster. Now this is where Turing Pi comes in because they've got a dedicated motherboard basically that's got everything integrated into it to make a Raspberry Pi cluster super, super simple. Okay, so now let's talk about the form factor and the functionality of the Turing Pi board. The board is actually a micro ITX motherboard size. So if you've got a micro ITX uh, computer case, you can actually just drop that right in there. Uh, all of the standoffs should work and you can put it in a case and keep it safe. There are a couple of different ways that you can power the Turing Pi. One way is with a 12 volt, five amp, basically a 60 watt uh, power supply uh, using a barrel jack, or you can use a two by two, a 12 volt power uh, cable from a computer power supply and power it that way as well. There are eight USB ports uh, on the device. I will say, however, there are only ports one, two, four, and six will have access to those ports. I'm not sure why uh, three, five, and seven don't get access to them, uh, but uh, one, two, four, and six do get access to those USB 2.0 ports. There's a full size one gig network connection uh, that we'll talk about just in, here in a little bit, but it's also got a built in network switch for each of those uh, compute modules. So you only need to have one cable plugged in in order to get network access to all seven compute units. There's also a full sized HDMI port. I really, really dig that. And then there's also a three and a half millimeter uh, AV jack to uh, kind of round things out. Now on the board, you'll notice that there are seven uh, SODIMM sized slots. Now SODIMM is basically laptop memory or laptop RAM sized slots. And that's how big uh, each of these uh, compute units are. Each slot gets its own 40 pin GPIO, just like you would expect to see on a Raspberry Pi. And like I mentioned, the board has a built-in network switch so that each unit gets a 100 meg connection. So the compute units each have a Broadcom M2837 processor. That's what you would expect to see on the uh, Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. In fact, all of the hardware, uh, all of the specs that you would expect to see on one of these compute units is from a Raspberry Pi 3B, 3B Plus, just with no IO built in. Uh, you're gonna get one gig of RAM, uh, either zero, eight, 16, or 32 gigs of onboard storage. Now I will say that the, 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 the units that don't come with any onboard storage do allow you to use a micro SD card to flash an operating system, but the others that have onboard storage don't allow you to use uh, the micro SD cards to flash an operating system. So now that we've kind of covered uh, the basics as far as the hardware and how it's laid out, that sort of thing, you may be wondering, well, what's the point? What can I do with the Turing Pi or this Raspberry Pi cluster uh, being based off of Raspberry Pi 3B pluses? And they've actually done a really good job of uh, kind of covering that on their Turing Pi website, which of course I'll have linked in the description down below. But we, right over here, it actually says home server, home labs, cloud apps, uh, learning Kubernetes, learning Docker Swarm, serverless, microservices, bare metal, uh, cloud native apps for testing environments. So learning how to set up testing environments and that sort of thing. Uh, learning concept of distributed machine learning apps, you know, getting each of these to work together to become kind of a, a, a bigger, stronger device, you know, kind of uh, the, 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 the sum is larger than the parts. Uh, also prototyping, learning uh, cluster applications. Uh, that's what we're gonna be doing uh, some of on this channel uh, going forward a little bit. So what we're gonna do is kind of take a look at how to set up a distributed application so we can install it uh, on the cluster and have you know the database go to one node and the, the application go to another node or have the application kind of distributed across multiple nodes with parallel parallelization, that sort of thing. They also talk about things like hosting like K8S, K3S, Minecraft Plex, 
own cloud, uh, Nextcloud, Cfile, uh, Minio, TensorFlow, the list goes on and on and on. Basically, anything that you can host on an ARM V8 processor, you should be able to set up uh, on this on uh, the Turing Pi with its compute modules and, and either have each compute module do its own thing or uh, you know, have it kind of spread out and distributed across the uh, the system here. Also, one thing I was I I did want to mention is is what you've seen uh, in this video is a Turing Pi with seven compute modules, and uh, you know the Turing Pi is about 190 bucks. Compute modules could run you at 30 to 40 bucks a piece, uh, and that can get kind of expensive. So something to keep in mind with this is you don't have to have all of the units populated all at once. If you only need one or two right now, you can populate one or two slots. And then later, if you need to add more, you can just continue to add more as you need to, or as you want to. So uh, so don't feel like you've got to populate all seven slots all at once. So you can kind of decide what you want to do for upgrades. Just drop a new compute module in. Again, you don't even have to shut the system down to add the compute module. Uh, and you can just continue to grow your Turing Pi uh, cluster very, very uh, easily without having having to worry about a big budget all up front all at once. So now that we've kind of taken a look at the Turing Pi and, and what it is and kind of what it does, um, in, in future videos, we're gonna take a look at how to do things like um, install an operating system on each of the different types of compute modules, whether it's got a built-in EMMC chip or or not, because uh, that is there's two different processes for that. Uh, we'll also take a look at setting up uh, Docker on uh, on the system and getting uh, a swarm set up through, uh, through Docker Swarm, that sort of thing. Those videos are all coming up uh, here in the next a couple of weeks, that sort of thing. Also, I'm, I'm only gonna mention this very briefly. I'm working with Turing Pi and a few other creators. We're gonna be giving away a fully loaded Turing Pi. Uh, that giveaway is coming up soon. So definitely get subscribed if you wanna stay notified about when that's gonna happen. Um, but I think that kind of wraps up everything that I wanted to talk about in this video. Again, there will be more content coming about this. So if you're interested in Turing Pi, definitely get subscribed for that as well. Um, but I think for right now, uh, I'm gonna give a big shout out to Turing Pi for sending this over. Actually really excited to be part of what they're doing here. So a uh, big shout out to Turing Pi for that. Again, links to everything will be in the description down below. Uh, while you're down there, there are a couple of links where if you wanted to uh, just kind of uh, support the channel via either a tip or uh, uh, being a patron, you could do that. Uh, via the links down there in the description. So with all that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap things up here. So as always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.